Thanks for coming back to Live Action Leatherworks. In this video, we're gonna talk about cutting the leather uh, design in and tooling with bevels and those kinds of uh, things like that. So in this video, we're gonna be using our swivel knife and uh, various beveling tools. Okay, so the first thing you always wanna do after you get out your swivel knife is we want to make sure it's good and sharp. So here we have some uh, Jewelers Rouge, and I just have a bit of cardboard here, uh, and you can use another piece of leather on wood, it's called a strop, you can uh, find several places that sell that, I mean, Tandy Leather, of course, uh, will sell it. But I just have a bit of cardboard, There's a, you know, I always have lots of cardboard lying around from various uh, things I buy on Amazon, all that kind of stuff, so I find it to be the the cheapest thing um, to keep around. Um, again, this Jewelers Rouge is sold at Tandy Leather. And you can get it, you know, any number of places. I'm sure uh, Amazon uh, will have it as well. So what I'm gonna do is take uh, my swivel knife and I'm just gonna pull it across the Jewelers Rouge. And I'm turn, each time I'm pulling it, I'm you know, turn, pull, turn, pull. And you can kind of see there's metal kind of uh, fragments coming off. So I'm just making sure that the knife is good and sharp. Okay, so I'll set this off to the side. Uh, now, before you begin, you do want to case the leather. Uh, like we did in our last video. So you take uh, some water, sponge, and get the, uh, the leather good and wet. Not sopping wet, uh, but you do want it to be wet. Let it dry out back to its normal color. And now we'll begin cutting the design into the leather here. Okay, so we've got our little moose head. So I'm gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna find a spot, uh, spot to start working in. And I'm gonna start over here. Now, you want to put this edge into those grooves you've made, and you're going to pull, right? So you're just gonna pull towards you. Um, a guy that I did some uh, work with, some training with, he actually pushes, but I found pulling, and, and most people see will we'll pull, okay? So let's just dig in. Now I'm not putting the entire blade in. I'm actually keeping it at a slight angle. Uh, it's very, it's a very acute angle. Uh, probably only like 25, 30 degree angle. As you can see, I've already started putting a line in. You can start at a more obtuse angle and then lower it as you go down. Okay, so there we go. And you can see with, with this, I was able to make a really good straight line, whereas originally my um, stylus was kind of all over the place. With this, I just pulled it straight back and got a good straight line. Okay, so we're going to continue on. So the reason why it's called a swivel knife, obviously, is because this barrel swivels around the saddle there. So it lets you do these really nice curves in your work. And you know, you've, I've seen guys that can do leaves in one go. They'll just, you know, without ever picking up the swivel knife, they'll just go all the way around. It's really nice work. So that's one thing you'll end up doing a lot is just getting scrap pieces of leather and 
just making lines just to get used to how it feels. So I realize my hand's probably covering up Unfortunately, a lot of what I'm doing, I may have to change the angle of the camera. Um, for later videos. Just so you can kind of see better of what I'm doing. Okay, so there we have it. We've got the first part of this moose head carved out. We're gonna finish up this antler here. And again, we, like we talked about in the last video, I'm let, you know, the, the leather dry after wetting the leather and this is very crucial to do when you're cutting in with your swivel knife if it is too wet you're going to get these really big and deep cuts that are also kind of mushy and it keeps your lines from being as crisp as they could be. So with making sure that the leather goes back to its natural color, it's ensuring that these lines are gonna be good and crisp. There we go, we're almost done. So one thing I want to talk about. So I'm about to make this cut for this final uh, bit of the antler. And what you might be tempted to do is you're going to say come around here. Okay, and I'm going to cut from here. I'm going to start here and I'm going to cut down. That's a really dangerous thing to do, however, when cutting from here towards an already cut line. The reason being is you can end up overextending and going past that cut. So rule of thumb is never cut towards a cut line. You want to cut away from one. So what I'm going to do is once I get to this point, I'm actually going to start from where I've already cut a line. and finish it out. So I don't want to overextend and end up cutting past that line, okay? So there we have uh, the beginnings of our antler here. Uh, so at this point, what I'll do, um, I'll, I'll do this head and I'll probably finish out the rest uh, off camera and then we'll talk about tooling, okay? So going back to what we're saying with uh, never cut towards a cut line, start from here. And cut. And I'm, you know, I'm putting a little bit of pressure. I'm not, I'm not like really pressing down. You shouldn't have to do that. you will put a little bit of pressure okay so this is a situation where I've, you know got two cut lines started here got about halfway got to turn this piece around and come at it from the other direction okay
I follow a similar philosophy. Um, like I did with uh, um, the uh, the cutting, you know, saying, "Hey, when you're cutting leather, um, cutting it out of the larger piece, you want to be looking where your knife is going, not where your knife is." Same thing with this. I want to be looking where my swivel knife will be going, not where it is. Okay. So one thing we want to do, we've got this muzzle here and these lines just kind of go up into this area. So we're actually going to do a little bit of a different trick here or, or add a little step. So I'm going to start from the bottom part of this muzzle using the same amount of pressure all the way through. But when I get to this end, I'm going to slowly lighten up. And it's a term, you know, used in uh, illustration. They call thick to thin lines. So we've kind of got, you know, even thick line and I've just slowly pulled up pressure so that way it ends in this tapered line here. It just gives it a more natural look. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Even pressure. And as I get to the end, I just don't use as much pressure. Heavy, heavy hand, and then slowly pull up. So that'll be something you'll want to practice just to kind of get these good natural lines because it makes it look like this piece is receding, you know, the front, that muzzle's coming out, and then it's receding back into the head. It kind of helps give you that look. A little, a little contouring, if you will. So you just want to look for areas like that where you can do that. Put his nostrils in. Boop. So I've even done that up here around the eye. So around this eye here, just kind of tapers off right there. Okay. And we'll add our eyeball in here. All right, so this is coming along really nice. Uh, got the antler, this one antler in. We've got the head in there. We'll finish out the antler and the circular area, and we'll come back and we'll tool it up and really get this thing looking nice. All right, so we'll see you then when it's all good and cut in.